guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well and ready to time travel because we are going in Maui. He just saw a butterfly outside. Did you want to go outside and catch the butterflies? No, that's not too good for you. Is this thing on? Hey, welcome to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well and ready to time travel because we are going into the world of Doctor Who. That's right, friends. In this pop culture animal comparison video, we are going to see just what animal is like a Dalek. I know, I know. It's going to be a little bit different because we're looking at the antagonist this time. But never fear, I'm not alone on my adventure. I'm joined by my buddy Leo from Natural World Facts. I am so excited for you guys to meet him because he is not only a Whovian, but a phenomenal YouTube creator. He makes incredible videos, not only that are cinematic in nature, but full of facts. He really does his research. And if you haven't already, do take a look at his channel and subscribe because you won't be disappointed. And together, we are gonna explore what animal is like a Dalek. But before we do, if you're new here and you wanna learn all about animals in pop culture or in the wild, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding. <laughs> so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, allons-y. The idea of the Daleks was created by Terry Nation. They made their first appearance in 1963's The Dead Planet, and their basic design has changed very little throughout the years. The Daleks come from the planet Skaro, and their leader and creator's name is Davros. This guy's quite the character. In fact, the Doctor actually met a young Davros in a more recent Doctor Who episode with Capaldi in The Magician's Apprentice. And while in the Whoverse, Davros was the creator of the Daleks, it was Raymond Cusick who made the Daleks a reality with his design concepts. And in fact, they were originally more cylindrical. However, Raymond wanted to expand them just a bit so the Dalek operator could sit down. And how much does it cost to build a Dalek? Well, the first four Daleks that were created in Shawcraft in Uxbridge cost around 250 pounds back in 1963. So you may be thinking, why did we choose to look at a Dalek? They're a robot after all. Well, not quite. The War Doctor describes Daleks as not robots, but savage, incredibly intelligent, living, breathing creatures housed inside a war tank. So where do the Daleks come from? Well, I mentioned the planet Skaro, and I'm gonna try to make a long story that's a bit complicated short. Bear with. Skaro was home to both the Khaleds and the Thals. Sadly, a nuclear war broke out between these two races. And remember that guy Davros? Well, he was the Khaled's chief scientist, and he created a casting for mutated Khaled's. Originally, he called it a Mark III travel machine, later to be known as Daleks, which is an anagram of Khaled's. And while the vain octopus isn't quite savage, they certainly are intelligent and they house themselves in something different. Thanks for having me, Shelby. Now, the vain octopus doesn't just yet have a space-faring empire spanning the cosmos, but it can be found in both the Pacific and Indian Oceans. It was only discovered for the first time as recently as 1964, when a small octopus of about six inches long was found. Individuals of this species have a lifespan of around three to five years. Well, Leo, the Dalek certainly can live a lot longer than the veined octopus. Unless, of course, the doctor's around, or Rose for that matter. Daleks are programmed to live, to keep calm and exterminate on. 
that was awful. Daleks do not die naturally. However, that doesn't mean they don't age. Their body does continue to decay, eventually becoming a gross blob of hatred. When they become incapable of steering their armor, those sludgy Daleks slime their way down into the sewers of Dalek cities, which coincidentally enough, the Dalek word for sewer also is that of graveyard. Pretty morbid, right? Veined octopus are impressively well adapted creatures. In 2009, biologists recorded seeing them picking up half coconut shells from the sea floor and carrying them around with them as portable shelters. This being the first documented case of a tool being used by an invertebrate. The next thing you know, they'll be hiding in dustbins and carrying a whisk and a plunger around with them. They're also great at camouflage and demonstrate both active predatory techniques and passive methods of obtaining prey. Their favorite menu items are crabs, clams, and shrimps. Over the years, the Daleks have also engaged in a form of camouflage. Yes, their design has relatively stayed the same, but sometimes they come in different colors. Most notably, I'm thinking of my favorite Dalek, who made his appearance in Victory of the Daleks in the Matt Smith era, when the Daleks were helping one Winston Churchill. That moment when the Union Jack wearing camouflage Dalek came out, it was kind of adorable, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he thought he was rather sweet. And then of course, spoilers for later on in the episode, there were different colored Daleks that did different functions. We of course have the white Supreme Dalek, the orange Scientist Dalek, and the blue Strategist Dalek, and white Eternal Dalek, and red Cloak Dalek. It was like a bag of Skittles, really. In fact, let me know in the comments below what Dalek you would be. Another similarity between the Dalek and the veined octopus is of course the tentacles. The living Dalek mutant has quite a few of these. The veined octopus hunts by seeking out prey, then pouncing and grabbing the creature before pulling it towards its mouth. Alternatively, if they're feeling lazy, they might just grab prey that drifts past them as they rest in their den. The beak is the only rigid part of this octopus's body, and it is used to pierce prey. Another useful adaptation of the veined octopus is its ability to lay up to 100,000 eggs, which then hatch into teeny tiny planktonic young, which drift on the ocean currents, causing their wide distribution. The Daleks are not to be underestimated. Even though they look like robots, as we've seen, they are far from it. They are feared by the Doctor, and for good reason. They are quite cold, logical, calculating creatures that make the most of their surroundings and continue to live on and cause trouble for the Doctor. And while the veined octopus may not be evil per se, they too, like the Daleks, are underestimated, just because they're invertebrates. However, they use their surroundings to their advantage by using those coconut shells to hide in and protect themselves, like the Daleks. The mutated Khaleds use that casing to protect them from things such as the Doctor. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to focus on this animal in the video. They are amazing and worthy of our attention and our protection. For more information about these amazing animals, check out the links in the description below. And while you're at it, head on over to Leo's channel, Natural World Facts, and subscribe to his amazing content. In particular, I'm thinking of his Chernobyl video that came out today. It is fabulous and a testament to his creativity, passion, and talent as a YouTube creator. Thanks so much for joining me, Leo. It really means a lot. And I can't wait to see what adventures you'll get up to next. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you later. 
Geronimo. On this incredible animal in this video. Oh, he's going off. <laughs> quite blind without glasses. I usually wear contacts, but today I wanted to give my eyeballs a break because I'm also running low on contacts and I don't really want to go to Specsavers because the queues are always really long and that would take up my whole entire lunch. So I may or may not start wearing my brainy specs more. I wish they did make me more brainy, that would be cool. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, for those of you who have seen a few of my videos, you know I go ding, right? It's a machine that goes ding. It is a very subtle, but little nudge, nudge, wink, wink to David Tennant's doctor with the machine that goes ding. Because I love him. Anyways, <laughs> Alonzi. Thanks for watching everyone. And we'll see you later. Geronimo. That didn't go well.